get things started here shortly ish Video looks good. All right. Just gonna hang tight till I get some some people in here. sure that audio was coming through. Here's it is. Let's plug this on Twitter, eh? A little bit more. If you happen to be in the chat, feel free to post a message, say hello. Just wait until we get some people before I get some practice in. I'm just going to be casting a few random games today. Nothing special or spectacular. Got a few games from Liquid Hero to cast. Got a few games from uh, Liquid Hey Pro. Uh, even got a couple games featuring Flash, the big Brood War superhero. <laughs> uh, playing some SC2 games against Kawhi Rice and Hey Pro, so... That should be fun. I uh, also got a couple games from my good buddy Viper, who has been practicing uh, the Demaga Bane Rain build to play, and he did that last night. I got to watch some of those games, and he gave me the replays so I can stream them tonight, so we can cast them like they're proper games, and you can watch the Bane Rain silent action, so it should be fun. Um, so just waiting to see if anybody shows up. I'm just going to switch to in-game really quick here um, and take a look to make sure everything looks alright when the scene switches. Testing out the auto scene switcher, which is a pretty awesome little tool. That looks good so far. Not getting a lot of... Uh, latency or anything like that. Frames appear to be okay, at least on my end. Hopefully they're okay on your end. Look at that. EPM. <laughs> Alright. So we'll drop out of this. Hop back over. Looks good. Auto, speed sw auto scene switcher works. Good. Okay.
that all good? All right. it again, sent out an email. Get some folks out here to watch. Alright, so let's see. I think while we're waiting, let me figure out what game I want to do first. <coughs> Here's a good one. Liquid Hero and Marine King. That could be fun. A little bit of a ZVP there. Or P <laughs> PVT, even neither of those players play Zerg, that would be an incorrect statement. Yeah, I think we'll start with that. Then maybe we'll uh, move on to some of Viper's games. Maybe we'll do one of the Flash games I have here. A little bit more. We'll see how it goes. Could be good times. But we're going to start in about five minutes, a quarter past six Eastern. And we'll cast for a few hours. And then later tonight... Uh, we're going to get some World of Warcraft raiding in uh, Dragon Soul, I believe. Probably Heroic Dragon Soul. So, watch people who know how to raid do what they do. Now I put the pressure on so they can't mess up. Shogun, welcome to the stream. I'm gonna see if I can get a few more folks in here before we get going. Start with Liquid Hero and Marine King. That should be fun to watch. And it's not a super long game either. It seems like it's a relatively nice short game, but not so short that it's all cheese. I don't actually know what it is. I haven't actually watched it, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of practicing my ability to cast, wouldn't it? Just a few more minutes. Feel free to tell your friends. We're going to cast some pro StarCraft action. And some semi-pro. Or, well, amateur. And not in a negative way, just, you know, not pro. <laughs> if you're a Zerg player, you'll actually really enjoy the Viper games that I'm going to cast today. Um, the... Demaga style of the Bane Rain play, where he basically does the Baneling drops in Overlords, is pretty sick, and Viper does a really good job of it. Um, the build's not perfect, he's just practicing it, so don't expect to see, you know, Demaga 
Naniwa style play going here, but it is going to be a good way to see uh, that build in action and how a diamond level player picks it up and learns it and puts it into play. And it looks really good and it works really well. Um, I did see these games, but I think I can still do a good job of uh, casting it for you. So we'll get to those shortly. Probably, I'll probably do another hero game and then we'll do uh, Vipers matches and maybe a Flash game or something like that. We'll see. No firm schedule here. All the time in the world. Couple more minutes to see if we can manage to get anybody else to join in and watch. And then it will be go time. It's just about time, so I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get to it. Let me make sure everything's good. All right, here we go. Let's get this thing loaded. So our first match that I'm going to be practicing my casting on today is going to be right now. Here we are starting in the semi-lower left-hand position here on a, what I believe is Antica Shipyard. It certainly looks like it. It is Marine King Prime. Let's zoom in on that. Yeah. And his opponent, the Blue Protoss, and our star of the show today. I have no idea what they're saying to one another. It's all in Korean, but no shock there. Our blue Protoss starting at the next counterclockwise position from MKP. It is Liquid Hero. So, again, this should be a fairly short game, pretty compact. I don't know what kind of surprises we're going to see here. So far, very standard play out of both players. Nothing cheesy, nothing surprising. But then again, everything just started. Now today, like I said, it is a practice cast for me. Everything is practice. I will probably miss stuff as the observer. That is one thing that I'm worth working on, is being a better observer. Um, I will probably also poorly describe how things are going on. That will happen. Uh, but, you know, practice makes perfect, right? I really wish I knew what they were talking about. <laughs> it seems very interesting. They're in a very good dis discussion right now. Um, but anyway, there we go. Again, standard play hero taking his first gas. So, both players on just one gas play. Again, really nothing interesting. No scouts have gone out quite yet. They're all just sort of doing their own thing, keeping to their own little private base. Another pylon going down. Again, nothing really weird or exciting here. Let me, uh, nope, that's the wrong thing. Let's throw that guy, bad boy, up. There we go. I'm sure that's much better. Right, first Marine is on the way, second Barracks about to go down. Again, very, very standard stuff. Like, super standard. This isn't even... Just, there's nothing to talk about. This is the worst kind. Well, second gas being taken by Hero, so there we go. A little bit of something interesting. So he's going to take that second gas. Of course, I'm sure he's going to be researching out warp gates. Uh, possibly, if he starts, starts to consider throwing down a robotics facility, he might go into uh, some robo-play. We'll see that shortly. Going with a reactor on this first uh, barracks instead of a tech lab early, so maybe he, maybe he'll be going for just focused uh, marine play and probably go with a uh, tech build after that. We'll have to see. Checking back in on Hero, starting to chrono out that warp gate technology. Another gateway going down, so we'll have two gates up shortly. A couple of units on the way. He's got that stalker in production. There goes the tech lab, so he is going to have that. Alright, so again, I guess not not really too far-fetched right now. 
Nothing too surprising. But here comes that first scout, finally. And oh, will it actually see anything? If it gets past the stalker, he will see... Uh, I think he's going to lose it. I think he's going to lose it. And there it goes. So he gets no information whatsoever. He doesn't see the expansion go down. <laughs> Marine King not pleased with that result. Uh, but he is going to send out a few units here. Yeah, it looks like he's going to send out a Marauder and a couple of Marines. Or, uh, is he? I don't know. Maybe he won't. We'll have to see. He's kind of just holding the, uh, the ramp into his natural right now. Um, Hero starting to do the scout. But at least uh, Marine King does have the advantage here of knowing exactly where Hero is. Uh, so right now that's where this little stalker is out hunting for Marine King. But this will be a good advantage for Marine King. He's got a nice little force coming in right now. So he's going to be able to do a little bit of harassment here. Oh, but there are those sentries blocking off the ramp, so he might be able to stop this nexus from happening. Oh, he's going to throw down a bunker right in the front. He, he will probably deny this nexus. Let's see if a hero cancels it before it finishes. Yeah, that nexus is not going to get to finish. Oh, don't let it finish, hero! He does cancel it last second, so good move there. But he does deny the expansion, which is smart. You don't want to give your Protoss player too much in the way of bases and expansions, especially if you can deny their natural. That's very effective. Uh, a lot of players tend to want to deny the uh, third as well, because that's when Protoss get really out of control. Uh, but anyway, still really strong force for uh, Marine King here. He's going to take out that top pylon. So that would have done. He's using that SCV to get that top vision. But uh, if he does it one more time, he's going to lose it. Oh, here we go. Oh, good job here. He does deny it, but that force field's a little bit off. He might be able to sneak by there if he wanted to. But he's actually going to just play a little bit of... Uh, who's the bigger man right now? Right on this entry ramp into the main. Uh, production right now. Stim is on the way. Combat shields just finished up for Marine King. We got an observer on the way. A couple more gateways. A robotics bay is about is on the way. That second base is under production. Another factory going down, or a factory going down. Excuse me. So it looks like we're finally going to get some mech play. Still, this is an excellent job by Marine King just to deny Hero the opportunity to expand. Uh, he's going to force him to whittle down this base, which is already way oversaturated, way more than Hero wants it to be, because he was planning on having that expansion down. Uh, he's leaving that pylon up, though. It's surprising that he hasn't just gone up to finish it, but maybe it's not that important to him. Uh, back on Marine King's side, he's got a nice little force gathered up inside his own base. Oh, and here comes a group and a drop. That's an immortal and a couple of, uh, a couple of centuries there inside. That warp prism. Oh, looks like he's going to unload right there instead. Instead of doing an actual drop, he's going to wall off the entry ramp to the main. He's going to clean up this army. Oh, but how much damage will Hero do here? And how much damage will he take by Marine King? Oh, he's going to lose a lot of units here. Pressure's coming in from this front as well. Oh, and the sentry goes down, the pylon goes down, another pylon about to go down. This game might not last much longer. Marine King making a lot of, putting a lot of pressure here. The first Colossus pops, that's going to help out tremendously. It's going to do a lot of good damage to help clean up this army. Checking back in on the main. Marine King holding that off. And yeah, it looks like, oh, he's going to roll in and doesn't really do a whole lot of damage there. If we take a look at the army count right now, still a pretty good advantage for Liquid Hero at this point. He's going to salvage that bunker, which he didn't really get to use too much. Uh, but, yeah, there you have it. And if, uh, let's check back in on the workers killed so far. So, only an exchange of a couple workers apiece. Uh, good amount of units killed, though, for both players. Now, if you look here, we have a Colossus drop that is about to roll in. Alright, he's actually going to hold it about the middle of the map right now. Marine King getting ready to go scouting with his factory. Putting out a couple of Vikings. To help counter that Colossus, which he does know is there. He's got that bunker right inside of his main 
stocked up with a variety of units. Alright, here comes the Colossus drop, but oh no, that Warp Prism is going to get taken out with the Colossus inside. Oh, he does drop it last second. That is some impressive play there from Hero. He drops that thing last second, but he does lose it anyway. Unfortunately, he cannot stop that Viking fast enough. Finally, the expansion about to finish for Hero. Oh, and here comes Hero's Force right now. Pretty sizable army, and yeah, right now the army advantage is, uh, well, it's actually pretty even. Full force is pretty even right now. Uh, so let's see what happens. Here we go. That factory in a great position to help sort of distract the AI and, and focus some of the attention on it instead of the army. That's a pretty clever move there, and it, you, you see it a lot. If you watch a lot of pro play, you will see that a lot. But these force fields, man. Hero cutting the army into ribbons. He might actually, he looks really good right now. He probably will take this here. Pulling the SCVs, Marine King is trying desperately to hold off Hero's forces. Ah, uh, here comes another back of the Sockers, the proxy pylon going up in the front. But this is going to be, uh, this is going to be hard. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen here. You're going to cancel that pylon? The Pro Bowl, mm, no, I thought it was going to escape up in sight, but it won't. No, Marine King, he held this off. He had to pull almost his entire a whole line of SCVs to hold it off, but it's a job well done. I mean, they're great defensive units, even though they're just workers. But he's going to hold that off, and he's going to keep moving in here. So now, with the meat shield of the SCVs and a small force in the back and the Vikings on the ground, he is going to clean this up, and he is going to stop Hero Deadness tracks. I don't think... He can stop Marine King right now. This is just too good, and that is going to be it. Oh, those probes are going down, and that is GG, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it. Marine King takes that game over Liquid Hero after some really impressive uh, initial pressure by Marine King. Um, I thought he might have had that. I, mean, I thought, you know, it, it was looking interesting. A little bit of back and forth there. But there you go. Um... I don't know if that was from a tournament. It was actually part of the Liquid Hero replay pack that you can download off of uh, TeamLiquidPro.com. Uh, so I grabbed a bunch of those games, picked out a few that seemed pretty prolific. <laughs> I thought, threw them into the my replay folder and figured, what the heck? Let's let's cast some of these. Uh, so yeah, I, I enjoyed that game. It was a nice, short, little, compact game, but it had a good amount of back and forth there by both of those guys. Um, so let's do another tweet here. Let's get some more folks out here. Thanks for joining me, Viper. Good to have you here. Oops. Helps if I spell the web address correctly, you know. Let's get some people in here right now. All right. Let's see, what should we do next? i got so many games here to cast. I have a bunch more from Hero. Uh, yeah, let's see, i got a bunch from Hero of all different varieties. All from the Korean server, of course. i got a couple... i got a few games from Flash, actually. Maybe I should do one of Flash's games. What do you think about that? Oh good, you did find the DreamHack replays. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see them when I googled it, but I didn't... I'll be honest, I didn't really look that hard. I just googled DreamHack replays, and I can only find the ones from last year. DreamHack Summer. But good. Good, I'm glad you found them with that. <laughs> Alright. I think we will do some Flash. Maybe that'll get some people interested to come check this out. we go. I'm going to do Flash and Kawaii Rice. Oh yeah, the, the links are disabled. <laughs> Sorry. I have to turn that off in, in the in the settings at some point, probably. It's not really a big deal when I don't have that many people who come to watch. <laughs> Alright, one more tweet, and then we're going to go right into... We're going to go right into it. I think we're going to do it. We're going to do Flash and Kawaii Rice from Team Light. Let's do this. Load her up. 
Flash, of course, the legendary Brood War Pro. Perhaps the greatest Brood War player ever in the history of ever. Here we are. Now, I know that nameplate really doesn't help you too much, but <laughs> as you can see from the chat, if you can read the chat, I know it's a little hard to read. Uh, in the red, as the red Terran, starting in the lower left-hand corner, this right here, the, the non-barcode name is Kawai Rice from Team Light. His opponent, starting in the upper right-hand corner, the blue Terran, is none other than the legendary man himself, who you probably just saw, if you watched MLG, you probably just saw him dominate his first ever StarCraft II professional tournament and win his first ever StarCraft II tournament. That is Flash. So, let's get started with this, shall we? Get all my, my, my action up. So, now a lot of people, if you watch a lot of Terran, you'll see that the opening placement of the Supply Depot varies so much from player to player. Most players, if they're on a map that has a nice little narrow ramp into their main, are going to try and wall it off. And it depends on who they're playing against. If they play against Zerg, they'll probably wall it off pretty frequently. Um, if, they really, if they're going to be doing anything that they want to try to keep hidden, they'll wall it off. Uh, sometimes, in the case like Kawhi Rice here, he's going to put the Supply Depot in a forward position to try and get good vision on the rest of the map. So as you can see, like in this position here, this is his vision. And he's got a really good view of where his opponent can come up from. So, like you can see, first he's going to see that scout come in, and he doesn't really care. You know, scout is a scout, doesn't matter. He's going to see the one bunker, or the one barracks, excuse me, and, you know, big surprise there. A barracks. Oh god, he's a Terran and he opened with a barracks and gas. How amazing. So, again, not a lot of info. You'll see the tech lab go down. Again, nothing shocking. Now, if we check back in on Flash, this is something interesting. Now, while I was talking about Kawhi Rice, we really missed the interesting part. The interesting part is this guy. This is something Flash loves to do, and that is expand first. He probably dropped that at around the 14 mark. Uh, he loves to do that. You'll see that in almost all of his games. He did that a lot in Brood War, and he does it a lot in StarCraft too. Uh, and here is Flash dropping a double barracks play, which... Kawhi is going to see 100% of it. And here again, another example of where you put the Supply Depot. In Flash's case, he drops it behind his mineral line. Uh, some players may drop it right here, like in this spot, uh, on the edge of the mineral line, where so he doesn't interrupt the flow of his SCVs, but he can sort of wall it off, kind of. So if somebody tries to come in with pressure, they only have one way to go, and he can kind of focus it a little bit. Um, but in this case, he's just going to drop it right behind his, his mineral line. No big deal. So here is Kawhi Rice. He's going to drop that expansion at the 20 mark. So, so far, so good. Again, nothing surprising coming out here. Does have that tech lab down. He has a Reaper on the way. Oh, boy. I like Reaper play. Reaper play is interesting depending on how well it's done. Uh, and it could be really good to do here. Another Reaper actually did already get that Reaper out. Uh, so here we go. Scout is hanging back. He's going to send that Scout back up the main to kind of gauge if there are any marines out. But he's not going to see them. And here comes that reaper. Oh, there are the marines. They are going to try and focus that reaper down. But, oh, he does stop that bunker. <laughs> I keep calling it a bunker. He stops the barracks in mid-production. And oh, oh, he's going to get flanked by that marine. And that reaper will escape with his life and 2 HP. That is something. But here's that second reaper. So, a good bit of uh, stoppage there from Flash to keep Kawhi Rice from putting that Reaper into play. He did get a couple of workers, though. If we take a look at workers killed, he did manage to kill a couple of them. Marines go down, so now he's got two extremely low health Reapers, but they're going to clean up a couple of those SCVs. He's going to stop production on both of those refineries for at least a moment, and hey, you know, any little thing you can do to slow down somebody's timing, it's all good, man. It's all good. All right, so transfer the SEVs. Got more barracks going down. He's going on to four racks. He's got reactors going down. Plus one attack is on the way. If we check back in on Flash, uh, he's mainly going for just re uh, marine build. Uh, I'm surprised he's not adding anything in terms of, uh, you know, like a 
reactor or anything like that to try and pump out more marines faster, but whatever. He's got a strategy in mind. I am not one to question the gameplay choices of somebody like Flash. That is not my job. Now, he does have these three marines on scout at those exact points where those reapers kept coming in. So a good way to keep himself safe, just in case any more Reaper harass comes in. Because it did do some pretty good job. I mean, if we take a look here, he got four workers lost in that, and a couple of, uh, of his army. So, it, it, did, it did a good job. I mean, it, the Reapers more than paid for themselves, and they're both, I believe, still alive. So, uh, yeah, actually they're both holding down this center map here. So yeah, they're both still alive with two HP, respectively each, I think. And yeah, they both have 2 HP. That's amazing. <laughs> Alright, so, Flash now focusing all his marines right at the top of his uh, entry ramp to his natural. Bunker is going down. And we are getting a reactor on that factory and the starport. He's probably going to swap them out. The scan goes down by Kawai Rice. He's probably going to see uh, just the... just to try and get a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Uh, he will kind of see everything. Probably get a good impression. So yeah, I expect here, we're just going to see these two swap places. He's going to go with a Marine Medivac to play. Yeah, there they go. Swap, swap. So that happened, as you would expect. Now, uh, Kawhi Rice moving in with a few Marines. Holding down that Zelnaga Tower. He's pushing up with those Reapers down by uh, the 4th. Yeah, the 4th, or maybe the 5th. I guess it depends on how you want to expand for uh, for Flash. Here he goes. He's going to move in with those uh, Reapers in the back. He's going to do a little bit of pressure here. He's going to hold position on one of those. Here it comes. Oh, and, well, so much for that Reaper. <laughs> so an effective job of taking out one of those expensive Reapers. A few Marines holding down the Zelnaga Tower. And here comes Flash. A couple of Medivacs and a nice handful of Marines. First, I'll clean up one of those. So that bit of map control is now lost for Kawaii Rice. So far, we got a lot of production in the works for Flash right now. There goes the factory for Kawaii Rice. He's gonna throw that down. He's same kind of build out of a uh, out of um, uh, Kawaii Rice here. <laughs> Excuse me. A couple of medevacs coming out on the reactor, adding the tech labs. Gonna go into siege tank production. I'm sure the same thing is happening up. Oh on Flash's base. He does have a siege tank in production. Stim is also, also just about to finish. Uh, plus one attack is about to finish. Plus one armor is uh, just about a third of the way done for Kawai Rice. And here comes... Oh, actually, Kawai's just moving his forces back. Flash now moving down. Good handful of marines that are stimmed, or can be stimmed and ready to go. Tank in the back. Bunch of medevacs. This looks like a good push but there is a hefty amount of marines and a reaper in the front there. And they stim up. Oh, we're going to get a little bit of a meeting here. Oh, a big exchange there. Trading back and forth. But the amount of medevacs is really going to help keep his stimmed army alive and let him stim and re-stim and stim again and just keep it going. And, and that's paying off for Flash. Look at this. That tank in the back doing huge amounts of damage to back up the bio army. And that, oh, the medevac just narrowly escapes, but a big win for Flash there. He takes a huge supply lead right now going into the next round. Siege, uh, sorry, siege production just wrapped up for Flash, about to wrap up for Kawaii Rice. Plus one armor is about to be done, and plus two attack is on the way. Combat shield's about to wrap up. Plus one armor for Flash just, just started. Kawaii dropping that skin. Flash drops one of his own to kind of see where everything is. Here's another exchange. Those tanks in the back going to do some really good jobs. Takes out that sieged up tank, but Kawaii with a tank of his own. So many scans. So many. I can't see past it. But Kawaii Rice is going to hold it off. He'll kill those tanks. He'll kill the medevac. Or will he kill any medevac? No, he's going to ignore the medevac. He's going to focus on that tank. Pretty smart move. Alright, so we do get a bit of a cleanup here. Though a fairly even trade. I mean, yeah, Kawhi Rice did manage to win the fight, but not by much. So he does take that. Uh, we're looking at the, oh, the, the 
map control that Kawhi did have, he no longer has. So, so much for that. Uh, we are now... Oh, it looks like a little bit of a southerly pressure coming in from Flash. He's probably going to go after. Or no, he's going to load up. He's going to do a drop play here. He is loading up for the drop play. Oh, look at this Marine. This Marine is going to see it. He's going to see it coming. That is some brilliant play. Really brilliant play. I mean, he clearly knows that's coming in. All those workers get pulled. Let's see what kind of damage, though. What can Flash do? He's going to siege up that tank in the back. He's going to take out a lot of those uh, supply depots. He's going to take out the gas. Both gases, as a matter of fact. So he cleans up the gas. But here comes the army. Sieged up tank still able to do a lot of damage. That's going to be really helpful. He's probably going to clean up this drop, but... Oh, that's going to do some good damage. And down goes that siege up tank. He does scare off a lot of that. Let's take a look at what just happened. Wow. So, a lot of workers killed for Flash right there. Well, we got a sensor tower up. And uh, Flash hovering around the border of it. I mean, he does clearly see it's all still there. So, it's not a big surprise for Kawhi Rice that all this force is still there. Uh, and units keep streaming in. And he's going to rally them right outside of that sensor tower, which is a good spot to keep them, you know, try to hide what you got as long as you possibly can. Rally them all together and then move in with a big blue bubble. That's the way to do it. Uh, so in a second attempt to try to drop, I guess he changed his mind. He's going to do a little bit of forward pressure here, but that top, oh, that, that siege tank on the high ground is going to do some great, great job here. The bio army is getting cleaned up, but that siege tank on the high ground, he can still strike them and he's doing it. Oh. I think Hawaii might hold this off. He, yeah, he doesn't have enough bio to kill that siege tank on the higher ground. And here come those marines to try and pick something off, and they just can't do it. Tank sieges up just inside, but isn't there for very long because the bio army moves away. So that was a really good exchange for Kawhi Rice. Really smart to have that tank on the high ground. Uh, so now Flash is going to have to hold off a bit and figure out what he's going to do. Well, he pokes in a little bit. I'm sure Kawhi saw a little bit of blue poke in there. And then Flash is like, uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not actually going to go in there. So forget you. I'm going to rally up in the middle of the map. That's what I'm going to do. And he does. And there he goes. So now for checking in here. Kawhi Rice trying to get those gases put back up. Those are under construction. A few more units on the way. Plus two armor and attack on the way for Flash. Long ways away, though. Very long ways away. And I'm pretty sure that Kawhi at this point is sitting on plus two already. Yep, so plus three could be on the way any moment now. And that's going to make a big factor when the supply difference is not huge. I mean, it's pretty sizable. It's about a 30 supply difference between these two guys right now. Uh, but it's not, it's not enough to say, oh, well, this game is over. <laughs> it's clearly not. Uh, vehicle weapons being researched to help reinforce those tanks, which are still sieged up in good position. It's a good place for him to fall back to in case uh, Kawhi tries to roll in with anything of his own. Uh, right now, I think Flash is doing a really good job of just owning the map. He's really owning the map well. Um, yeah, he hasn't made a kill move yet. But he's been doing a lot of pressure. He's been forcing Kawhi Rice to keep in his base, keep at his naturals, at his expansions. Um, this is a smart move here by Kawhi Rice, too. He's got this Marine sitting at the lower ramp. So if Flash tries to come make a lower attack, he's going to spot it. It's just outside the range of his sensor tower, but he can still see it. Still, Flash is hanging tight, building up forces, growing that supply count. Uh, he's got more and more units coming in. I mean, this is going to be pretty impressive. Well, we got plus three attack on the way. For Kawhi Rice. Plus two attack is just about to finish. Give me about... What are we looking at? A few more seconds? 15 seconds? 20 seconds. Another Marine wasted just to try and re-establish that scouting position. <laughs> it is a smart move, though. You know, you do want to try and fool your enemy a bit. Plus three armor just put underway for Kawhi Rice. Here comes a handful of Marines. We're going to clean up that Zalnaga Tower. But there's those tanks up there. Duh. Not, wor not worth it. It is not worth it to have that Zalnaga Tower. Because you will die. Scan goes down. He's going to see those siege tanks. And he's going to know it's not worth dying. Another scan goes down. He does not see the army. He sees the five Marines that are just sort of on patrol right now, I suppose. <laughs> going on the exploration. Here is 
a little bit of an army here. Oh, we are in. I think we're about to see some uh, some danger. Owning those Elnaga Towers. Oh, Flash is moving in down north, but here comes Kawhi Rice. He's going to move in from the side. A max army for Flash. He's going to roll in. Oh, he's luring him back into the range of those siege tanks. Very smart move. Flash doing a phenomenal job. He's going to force him to have to go into range of those siege tanks if he wants to do any damage. And he's going to take out that third. He's going to kill a ton of workers here. Oh, I don't... This is not pretty. This is not pretty at all. Flash on a max army. This is a huge supply difference now. There is not much more that Kawai Rice can do. I think, yeah, Flash is going to move in for the kill. He knows where that army is. He drops the scan. He sees it. They're going to try to move in. He's going to try and take out Flash's fourth, but it ain't going to happen because here comes Flash in full force. Tanks in the back. Cleans it all up, and that is going to do it. There goes the army. GG God. My Kawhi Rice. That is the way to end it. That is exactly how you end it when you are playing a game against Flash, and that was impressive. I don't know if anybody else has really seen much from Flash other than what he did at um, MLG. But that was some pretty impressive stuff. I was, I was, I enjoyed it. I thought that was good. I think it's good. He's got his stuff together. He's, he's gonna, he says he's about a year or two out from actually being, you know, a top level pro or, or at his level where he was in Brood War. And that might be true, but he's well on his way if he can handle quiet rights like that. Uh, all right. So, what do we have now? We need... I need more visitors, man. I'm surprised there's not more visitors. All these people saying, oh yeah, I'll come watch. Then they don't. Maybe I should call out people in particular. I did email a bunch of people, but they aren't. At least I can count on Viper. That's all I can say. Let's count on my buddy Viper to be here. Oh, so let's see. What do we, what do we have else? What else do we have here? Well, I got a bunch more Liquid Hero games. I've got another one of Flash's games, which I think I'll do a little bit later. Um, I do have a couple of Viper's games. It would be really weird to cast his own games right back to him without anybody else watching. Yeah, I'll have to pile up to pile it all on if I want to get these people here. Alright. Let's try this again. Another tweet. Get some more people out here. What do you think, Viper? You're here. What would you like to see? I got a few more games featuring uh, Liquid Hero. I've got a uh, pretty interesting uh, ZVP between uh, Team Impulse's Joker and uh, Vindicare. I'm not sure what team he's from, but it was a uh, off race game that Buddha saw it. He'll uh, he'll appreciate how the, the meta is redefined in this incredible game. <laughs> sure, let's do it. You know what? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet them specifically, or at least tweet Joker. Let's see if he'll uh, if he'll come see. Alright, so, 
good? Am I good? I think I'm good. There we go. That's what I wanted. Oh, so much stuff, man. So much. Okay. So I just tweeted it at Joker. So let's see. Let's do it. This is going to be fantastic. I'm telling you right now, the, the metagame is redefined in this matchup. So here we go. Starting in the lower left, playing as the purple Protoss, the sa almost the same color as, their, as Creep Spread, it is Vindicare. Let's throw that bad boy in. Yeah. And his opponent, starting in the lower right, the close spawn positions, it is Team Impulse's Joker. Now, Joker does not normally play Zerg. I think he's Terran. I could be wrong. Don't don't make fun of me if I am wrong. I probably am. Uh, but we are getting we're going to see some interesting stuff. That's all I can say. I did see. I did watch this game. I was there when it was streamed live, and I demanded, I insisted that Joker send me this game because I just had to see it. I, I had to own it. I had to have it in my hands to be able to witness it for myself, and it's it's pretty fantastic. Um, I don't wanna, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. It's been a few days, so I don't actually remember the exact process of the game, but uh, here we go. Get stuff started. Again, ba pretty basic openings. Early scout. I think Joker's just trying to get an idea of where Vindicare is. Um... So right now we're just waiting for the action to start, and oh my god, the action will be great. Alright, so that pylon going down at the natural, that is that is forge fast expand action right there, usually. Usually, at least. There's that scouting, that scouting drone, the last place he looks. But that's okay, because at least he's going to look. He's going to see it, he's going to find him. It's all going to be good. So he's going to go, yeah, there is the fast expand. So maybe it's a fast expand forge, or maybe it's just a fast expand. Maybe it has nothing to do with the forge. Who needs a forge? Forge? Psh, whatever. What's a forge ever done for me? So interesting that he's... I guess that they're searching the, the northernmost positions first. Maybe they expected the uh, cr forced cross spawn or something like that, but... No, it will be the near spawn, and Joker's going to know that information first. He already knows now exactly where Vindicare is. Well, I think he does. I'm not sure if Joker knows that this is, uh, how many spawn locations are or where they are on this particular map. Um, he might. I don't remember. I know there was a game where he wasn't sure, but that's okay. I'm going to hold it against him. Alright, well, here comes the queen. And, uh, there's the forge. Alright. So we are getting a fast expand forge flavor, lime, whatever. It's happening. And there's a... That's a pretty big gap right there. I wonder if that's... Mmm. I wonder if that's going to be enough. Park with a zealot. Usually a zealot will wrap that wall off done, but, uh, I don't know. So, oh, what is, what is this? What? What is it? What is this? What is this? With the... With the hatch. <laughs> At least he gets all those probes. He pulls all those probes off. He has to cancel. And... Oh, what's he... What is the... Alright. No, he's doing it again. He's doing it again. Okay. So... Proxy hatch. Photon cannon going down. Not sacrificing all those probes this time. Oh, Joker. Fantastic. I saw the two hatcheries in production, and I'm like, well, I saw the one down in his natural, but where's the other one? Oh, why is there a big blue dot in Vindicare's main? And that's why. So that photon cannon, is that in range, though? I don't know if that cannon's in range. Ooh, that's... I guess I'll find out. Oh, it's not! Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> that cannon is not in range. Oh, dang. Now, I'm not sure if Vindicare plays Protoss normally as well. I don't, I don't know if he does. Oh, actually, there, there you go. Okay, so he's fine. He throws the cybernetic score down, and he's got the full wall, so he's, he's good on that. But, I mean, it's, it's irrelevant now. Because now he's going to throw down another pylon to get the extra distance he needs. It's interesting that he'd throw the pylon down there. Alright, he's going to put another photon cannon up a little bit closer. That might cover the distance, but he does have that zealot there. That will... Oh, and he's going to cause the cancel. And down goes 
fell on the bad boy. <laughs> uh, so the drone goes down. That gets cancelled. Roach Warren now going down after that incredible <laughs> Roxy hatch play that failed miserably, but it was incredible. I might add. Pretty remarkable stuff. Uh, so now we're just going to get a little bit of peace and quiet. A couple of gas being taken by Vindicare. Stargate going down. Oh no. The Stargate. What are we going to get here? Not Chrono boosting out that uh, warp gate. Because, you know, it takes a long time for that warp gate to finish. And, and more pylons. More. You, what, what can you, you need more pylons. I mean, come on. You need them. You need them. Three gateways are on their way. Sorry, two gateways are on their way. And the Stargate. Can't forget the Stargate. It's great stuff. Oh no. Oh wait, I just saw this. Where is it? There it is. That's a Nidus. Oh, the Nidus. And he loads it up. Where is he going to put it? Where is he going to put the Nidus? Uh, I'm so eager to see. I don't know where he's going to put the Nidus. Where is it going to pop up? What's going to happen? This is exciting. He's got that Nidus network all loaded up. Oh... And here he goes, he's moving in with that Overlord, he's going to look for a good spot. Maybe he's going to drop it right on this little edge here. Sneak it right, oh, there it is, there it is, I called it, there it is. Here comes the Norm, oh, but there is the Phoenix to clean it up. Oh, it's going to pop, they're not going to be able to stop it, it's not enough, here it comes. Oh, and it does pop, and here comes the Cavalry, but the Worm gets killed by the probes, but they're all going to start to fall. Oh, but here comes, the, he's got the cannon, reinforced the stalker there. The viking in the pack. Probe's getting pulled again to help clean this up. On oh, and the <laughs> worm trying to pop again, and it does get denied. Oh. Alright, so. Th there, ooh, what the heck? I <laughs> think he almost killed his own zealot there. You gotta watch that A-clicking, guys. Be really careful with your A-clicking, because that will, that'll, that'll, that'll hurt you. Well, we almost had that Phoenix get taken out, but it does manage to survive. More units getting warped in. There's a collection of roaches and lings gathering up at the foot of the ramp, leading into the natural. So we have some Void Rays on the way now, for fun. Hydra Den. Go on, Hydras, because you know. Hydra lists are good. Still got that Nidus network. <laughs> oh, the Nidus. That's great. Hydra play. It's got Roach Speed coming. So there we go. Good times. Immortal on the way for Vindicare. He's got that coming out. More. Oh, another Phoenix coming. So here comes that Void Ray. I'm, I'm not sure what his plan is for this Void Ray. I mean, at least it's good, you know, there's not a lot of anti-air here, just the queen. Uh, so he could do a bit of damage if he wants to, with a void ray, if he, do, if he just rolls on in here and starts picking stuff up. I wonder if he's going to target down that worm, or if he's going to try and target down the queen. I and mean, probably the queen, because, you know, you don't want to die. Oh, you got to do it. You got to commit, buddy. Oh, and a good pick up there. Fantastic. And that is going to fully charge that void ray up. Look at that. Down he goes. Queen is dead. Now it's time to do some damage. Old school. You have a Hydra list up. Couple Hydras. Oh, does he know that these are Hydras? Or what does he think they are? <laughs> well, they get a couple of shots off, but nothing else. So the Hydras do prove to be a little bit useful right now. Third base is done. He's got that Overlord at the distant fourth, if he wants to take that. Phoenix has come all the way back to his third base. Now a third base. All right, all right, couple of robotic space. I guess. Sure, going for that. No problem. Cause you know, you need, you need, you need to have multiple robo base. Cause if you don't, then how 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 are you how are you gonna um yeah um uh okay no you don't you, you don't actually need them both there. That's that's. You don't want to do that. 
But that's okay. Because, you know, like I said, this game redefines the meta. I'm telling you right now, for everything. Thermal Lance being researched. That just started. Plus one air about to finish. Ah, that's, yeah, that's wrapping up. Plus one armor about to finish. He's already got plus one weapons done. Uh, now, is he going to put up that Twilight Council so he can start researching plus two? Surprised he hasn't dropped that already. Maybe he's going to blink play or anything like that. Oh, here we go. He does manage to clean up those phoenixes. Now, what is he going to do? Is he going to roll out with his army? It's a pretty good force. He could probably do a pretty good amount of damage if he rolls out with them. But no, I guess he's just going to hang tight and... All right. I mean, let me poke back in down here. Here, what, what do we got going on? Warp prism speed is on the way. Okay, maybe he's going for some drop play. Could be. Could be doing drop play. He needs more warp prisms to do that, though. But it's a good start. Another robo facility going down. All right. Oh, here we go. We're getting the clash right here, middle of the map. Here come the hydras rolling in from the back. Those guys are slow, though. This isn't heart of the swarm yet. Oh, don't want. Here we go. He's committing. Committing to the attack. Down goes the Colossus. A few, a uh, few zealots warping in, but I don't know if they're going to do much good. This is a good move here by Joker. He's going to actually start cleaning this up pretty well after that fantastic night display. I mean, golly. Oh, he's gonna, is he? Oh, he's pulling back. He could have probably moved in and, and really done a lot of damage. I'm surprised he's pulling back here. I'm really not sure why he's pulling back. Oh, wait. That's a fleet beacon that is about to finish. That is a fleet beacon, and I don't think... Oh, my. Yeah. That's a mama ship. That is a mother ship coming in. He better move. Joker, you better move. You need to take this. Oh, where is he going? What is he doing? I think he's moving in on this third. He might be trying to do a little bit of pressure here. More roaches being moved out. Double Evo chamber going down. That mother ship is a third of the way done. Time is precious. Whoa, what is he doing? I don't really know what he's got going on here, but here he goes. He's moving in again. He's going to try and take out some of those pylons. He does supply block Vindicare, so that will force the mothership to just stop. Yeah, and that's not enough supply for a mothership. But a lot of other pylons are done, so the mothership is back on the way, I think. No, he's still supply blocked. Uh, he might actually be okay right now. Yeah, he, he's got the supply for the mothership, so he's... It's almost done. Oh, and there it goes again. Stopped. Nobody's good. He's doing good managing his pylons, I guess. Uh, yeah, but he's just he's stopping. I'm not sure why he's stopping here. He's given that mothership plenty of time. It's about to finish. He's got maybe a fifth of the, of the way to go, and it's going to be done. Yeah, that's going to wrap up in... 20 seconds or less. Probably less than 20 seconds, because he's got that Corona Boosted. He's trying to get that stuff out now. He wants that out right now. Give me that mothership right this very second. No more waiting. No more delaying. Here it comes. Look at that bad boy. Rolling in like a boss. And the army gets covered and cloaked. And this is where it gets really ugly for Joker, because he took too long. It happened. He took too long. He was waiting for something. I don't know what. But now he can't see the army, and it's just going to tear him apart. Huge supply lead has just been lost. The Overseer Cocoon, he's trying to do it in the middle of the field, <laughs> which is not pretty. Oh, and Vindicare rolling out with his Mothership clo Cloaked Forces. For those of you who are not familiar with the Mothership, that is one of the biggest perks of having it. If you don't have a lot of Archons, which you can use, uh, they have an ability called uh, Vortex, which a lot of people just refer to as a toilet, because it just puts a big toilet on the ground. You throw that in with a bunch of Archons and uh, a bunch of other units, as soon as they pop out, it is like a bomb went off. Well, he's got a couple more Overseers on the way, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I really don't. I mean, he's finally going to be able to see everything, but... Ugh. I don't know, if he throws down a Vortex, it, uh, he's 
I gotta check here. He does have the energy for it, so he could throw a Vortex down and, and really clean this up, and there it is. Vortex goes down. The assault continues. A couple of uh, Corruptors are just not gonna be enough. Oh, one goes down. Here goes that natural. The Thermal Lance of those... Those Colossi can just sit in the back and fire away like random. They don't care. Oh, all those little... Oh no, the drone's getting melted. Melted, melted, melted. More roaches, plus one missile attacks on the way. Uh, just about to finish, so... I, I, it's... Yeah, that's uh, too little too late, my friend. Too little too late. Roach, Warren, gonna drop. About over a hundred supply lead at this point. That is GG, and that is a fantastic game, my friends. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. That is some that is some stellar play right there. Oh, <sighs> yeah, I really wanted to share that with everybody because that's uh that's some fun stuff. So pro tip for Zerg players uh, is basically, I guess, to not do what Joker did with the proxy hatch Nidus play that didn't seem to go anywhere. A really heavy probe commitment to taking that stuff down by uh, Vindicus, but it did work. He did win, thanks to letting the mothership happen. Pressure, man. You gotta keep putting that pressure on. When you got the advantage, you just push. What do you do when you're ahead? This is a line from Artosis. What do you do when you're ahead? You get more ahead. And I remember that. It's a good it's a good line. Oh, alright. Well cool. So that was fun. Uh what else do we got here? Let's see, what is it? Seven o'clock? I haven't even been going for an hour yet. I got plenty of time. Let's keep going. How about I can't read this crazy Korean. Man, I don't know. All right, I know this is PvP. Um, okay. I think I know which one is Zerg and which one is Terran now. <laughs> I'm learning Korean while I while I get this ready, so I think I finally know which one is which. Uh, Uda, my friend, welcome. You just missed it. I just finished casting that Joker match against Vindicus, where he uh, completely redefined the metagame of, uh, of Zerg. It was fantastic. Well, I think what I'm going to do now... Oh, let me see, let me see, let me see. How about some PvZ? I know we got some Zerg fans here. People like Verg. Zerg. Zerg. Let's do it. Let's do... Liquid Hero versus Crazy Moving. How about that? Let's load that bad boy up right now. Here we go. Names up, and here we are starting in the bottom left position. It is your Red Zerg player. It is Crazy Moving. And his opponent, starting in the upper right, in the cross pawn position, of course, here on Pretty sure it's Cloud Kingdom. Yep, it is. Uh, his opponent, none other than Liquid Hero. Hero. There you go. So, are we going to get anything interesting or fun or exciting out of this game? I don't know. It is a long affair. Fairly long affair. It's going to be a good game. So you're not going to see any cheap cheese that's going to end the game early, thankfully. Uh, this also comes out of the Liquid Hero replay pack, which you can download at teamliquidpro.com along with replay packs going back for weeks from all sorts of players. So, it's good stuff. Buddha is probably going to mock me relentlessly because I'm so bad at casting, but I'm getting better. That's why I'm here. I'm practicing. I'm trying to at least be in, in, I'm trying to at least be engaging even if I can't be informative. <laughs> even if I don't know what I'm talking about, I can at the very least entertain people or try. So, as of right now, we are not getting a whole lot of spectacular, exciting, dynamic action. Just the usual, typical fare. Uh, 
Not sure what build Crazy Moog's going to go for here. He hasn't even turned on his pool, and it's pretty late. Now he's going to go with the expand first. Yep, there it goes. So he, Hero was not able to deny that. So he does go with the, the uh, base down at 15, and we are just waiting to see what is next. But Hero is going to get a good scout here of nothing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Great scout, he gets absolutely no information aside from the fact that Crazy Moving expanded first. So, that can be kind of informative, I guess. You know, if you know he's going to go with the expand first, which is fairly typical, uh, you can at least plan for it. But then again, you know, Hero going with the uh, fast expand here. So, again, this is pretty typical stuff. So they're both playing defensively, or no, they're both playing... They want an economy. They're trying to get a good economy going. They're not doing any early aggression. So, they're both playing that same way. There goes the gateway. Right now, Hero is just uh, working on walling off this area here. There goes the forge. Crazy moving, get all the information he wants of very little. So far, neither player taking any gas. Oh, let me throw that bad boy up. Keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> uh, well, finally, actually, you know, we are finally getting some gas being taken by Hero. Going double gas at his main. Nexus is about to finish. There goes that first gate. He's going to start churning out some zealots, I'm sure. There's the Photon Cannon for defense. Good wall off here. Should keep himself safe from anything, even though nothing's actually happening. Well, here's a little bit of a Zergling Scout, but that's going to be not enough. Because that Photon Cannon's going to finish uh, shortly. And the probe going to help finish off that wall before, well, no Zealot's actually on the way. But there is the cannon. Going to start doing a little bit of cleanup. Crazy moving. He's going to able to be able to sneak around. He's going to sneak into the main. He will see the cybernetics core. He will see the double gas. So a good bit of information and some sneaky moving by crazy moving to get into hero space. Uh, unfortunately, he is supply blocked at the moment, and there it goes. Third hatchery going down. So he does get that done. So he gets some pretty good information, I guess. You know, he's able to see a lot of what's happening and try and plan around it a bit. <laughs> Hero pulling a few probes there to try and scare those uh, lings away. Well, at least put them on the run, but there's not a whole lot else happening right now. Hero saving up his chrono boost for a rainy day, apparently. A little preoccupied with the ling harassment. Not even harassment, it's just annoyance right now. And there's only one left, so no big deal. All right. Really? I mean, I mean, Crazy Moving, he did a little bit of pressure with those lings just to kind of get some information, just to, you know, keep Hero busy, keep him distracted. Uh, but that's about it. So far, not a whole lot of excitement going on here. Now just droning up behind that little bit of harassment, he does see that there's no real early pressure coming from Hero, so we can successfully drone up behind it and built up his economy. Uh, another pylon going down. Crazy moving in a good position to kind of see everything. If we turn that off, we can kind of see he's going to see the gas go down at the natural. But he will take double gas on the natural. So going with a very gas-heavy play right now. We'll have to see exactly what he's going to do. Here comes another round of lings to see if we can get some more info. Oh, they're trying to chase down that stalker who's going to lure them right back into range of that cannon and into range of those little sentries. Oh, is that, that, ooh, that, oh, I don't know if he's going to go down. He will go down. So for a, f a handful of lings are sacrificed to take down that one stalker, which is a, no, uh, it's a pretty good trade. Taking out stalkers is good. Stalkers are fairly expensive. Fairly. Not like crazy amount, but you know, it's still good. So it looks like he's trying to, uh, he does not see that overlord. It's a great spot to park that overlord. You get good vision and nobody knows you're there. Well, here comes Hero's small army. Checking the Zelnaga Tower, making sure that's okay. 
Nothing there. Ling poking up. Here he's going to go on patrol at that base just to see if Hero decides to expand there. I'll be able to get a little bit more information off of that. Crazy moving a very slight supply lead right now. Look at the creep spread, though. Really good job keeping that creep spread. He's getting that started. I don't know what time we're in on this game right now because the time is apparently disabled. That's okay. And Ling's trying to move in with those Ling's. Do a little bit of pressure, but no, he's just going to lose a whole bunch of them and they're all going to die. <laughs> so, so much for that. Uh, the Nexus does go down at the base, so Crazy Moving probably saw that, so he knew that was coming. Roach speed on the way, I believe, that is. Yeah, that is a Roach speed. We've got the Evo Chamber going down. we got a Spire that just went down. Macro hatch in position. Crazy Moving getting ready to uh, go into some Roach. Hydra play. There is that observer in position for Hero. Oh, but it does get spotted because of the... I don't know. Oh, the sorry, I didn't even see the Overseer right there. Yeah, there it is, and he gets picked off. Great job by Crazy Moving to clean that up. And here comes Hero's force. He's going to try and come in from the north. Of course, it's going to be visible as soon as he gets on this creep. But he does have an a, uh, observer with him, so he will be able to clean up some of this creep and try to deny it a bit, keep it from spreading too far. Yep, here he goes. Cleaning up the creep. That's what you got to do. It's been getting a little out of hand, so that's something that you really got to pay attention to, especially if you're going to be playing against a Zerg player. Don't let the creep get so far out of control. Hallucination. There's that hallucinated phoenix. It's going to slip up there, do a little bit of damage, poke around. He's going to get good vision on everything. He's going to see what's happening. He's going to check the bases. You'll see that this base is really well defended with these spine crawlers going in. And down goes the hallucinated phoenix. Oh, and here comes a round of blings, and that's not walled off. Oh, he's going to lose. Oh, is he, is he going to lose anything? This is pretty good force fields. No, he does not lose it. Look at that. Crazy moving. The distant expansion going down. Sending the lings around in the back here. So far. We're in pretty good shape. A lot of lings coming in. He's got the roaches. He's got that plus one aerial attack on the way. The creep tumor's going down. Four more mutas are on the way to help round out his sizable muta ball at the moment. Oh, and there goes that zealot. It's going to die. A little bit of help from the Roach friends. <laughs> Does a pretty good job of, of controlling some of that creep, but it's starting to spread up on the other side that he didn't have a chance to get to, so... Pretty good sizable Muta Ball. A little bit more coming in. He's got more Mutas on the way. Uh, Blink is on the way right now, as well as plus two attack. It's just started. Colossus coming into play. Photon Cannons going up. A lot of defensive play right now. Templar Archives are on the way as well. So yeah, it looks like we're going to be seeing some high Templars coming out. Hopefully he's going to want to get his storm research. There it is. That's done. First thing on the agenda. Is he going to research that storm? Don't know. Don't see it happening yet. But here comes the Muta Ball. He's going to try and poke around the side. He knows that that cannons are there. Oh, and there he goes, he's cleaning up that. He cleans up the first cannon. He's focusing on the second cannon. He cleans that up. And here comes the Muta Ball just taken off into the main. But the Blink research is done. Blink Stalker's an excellent counter to a Muta Ball. But he does a good job of making them blink into the main. Oh, but the Blink was already ready. And he does manage to force them to escape. Even though he lost a little bit of defensive units, he didn't really lose a ton. Army is still fairly balanced here. So far, good job by a hero. Army already maxed out for crazy moving, which is pretty standard for Zerg. They're going to max out pretty quickly. Um, here we go, taking gas on that expansion. He's already got the gas down on this distant expansion, which is pretty well under production right now and well defended. It's exciting stuff. Crazy moving has just amazing map control at this point. 
Oh, that Nexus is gonna be denied. He does have to for is forced to cancel it. Is that mutable, man? Look at that. Gross. Crazy moving, playing extremely defensively. He does a smart move of it, of defending and then expanding behind his defenses and just moving out and, and putting the pressure on Hero at every corner. Uh, but Hero is closing in on a maxed out army. So many units on the way. Plus two attack, plus one melee for Zerg are on the way. More of those cannons are being cleaned up. They're going to do a lot of damage, but he's going to be able to clean them up. Oh, but this is not looking good. Oh, good blink. Will pick off. No, almost picked off a couple there, but he doesn't manage to get to do it. Stargate going down now. More pylons. The High Templar is done. Still no storm, so he hasn't researched that. Or he did research storm. I just missed it entirely because I'm terrible. <laughs> so there's the Stargate. Oh, here we go. Uniball rolls back in. Using the Lings to try and force those pylons to go down. And another blink forward. So far, Hero doing a pretty good job of holding off these mutas. I subscribe to the same kind of philosophy. I cannot stand mutas. <laughs> They're the most annoying little bastards in the world. Well, here comes the muta ball. Let's follow him. He almost pulled that army out of position. Speedlings are trying to uh, force the front. Here goes the muta balls into the main. Cleans those up. Taking out some stalkers. This, uh, this might not be pretty good for Hero. He's got to turn. Oh, and the storm just misses. Crazy moving with those dynamic twists and turns to avoid that pressure. And here comes the attack by Liquid Hero. He's trying to force down that expansion. He will get it to go down. Crazy moving still expanding to the far corners. More army being taken out by Hero, but he's losing a lot more. Hero has a small advantage right now. We're just going to have to see what's going to happen here. Plus two missiles are being researched for the Zerg player. Great storm on those Lings, or those Mutas, excuse me. <laughs> that is a massive Muta Ball now. Those storms are dang essential. And Hero is going to be pushing out on a max army now. Fleet Beacon going down for Hero. Where is that bad boy? There he is. So we'll have to see what happens with that. A little bit of Ling pressure, trying to do a bit of damage here. Won't be able to do too much, though. Archons. Thought he was pulling out an Archon. Mutaball rolling in, but he's getting some... Oh, he's taking a lot of damage to those Mutas. He really is. Oh, and another great storm does claim a Mutalisk. So he does have that base up in the upper the far upper left hand corner but he doesn't have any workers at it yet here comes that muta ball of destruction let's see where he's gonna head in now oh the blink oh and he does manage to claim two more mutas oh but he's gonna come in from behind he's getting he's got to be careful he's got to be really careful with this he's gonna get chased away So Hero doing an amazing job of just holding everything off, and, and especially with such a large Muta flock. Um, oh, here we go. That that lower right expansion is going to get cleaned up, or might get cleaned up. Oh, and the Mutas get lured into position, right, directly blinks under them. This is looking very good for Hero. Oh, but here come the Lings. The Lings moving in. He blinks away from them to take out more of those Mutas. Unfortunately, he's right in range of that spine crawler, which is going to help Crazy Moving clean a lot of that up. Again, he blinks up onto the high ground. He's going to take out more of those mutas, more of the lings. Oh, and there it goes with a couple of observers in the area. So he does lose all that whole force. So this could be an interesting situation here. The army supply definitely in Crazy Moving's favor right now. Take a look at the units killed. Big win for Crazy Moving on that last attack. But 
not as many units kill, <laughs> units kill for hero, because it's just a lot of lings, really. That's really what it comes down to. Lots of lings going down. Another group got the Archons in there. Oh, a nice blink under. Gonna do more damage. He takes out more of those lings. He's gonna deny this expansion yet again. So that will go down. A little bit of a ling run by. That will be spotted by that observer in position. Oh, and the, the High Templar gets taken out. Cannons cannot get taken out, though. Zealot warping. They're going up to the main base now. He's going to try and take out... Uh -huh. All right, it's interesting that he focused down that, that particular uh, cybernetic score, but he does take it out, so that's going to slow down production a little bit. Oh, narrowly avoids eating that storm. Narrowly avoids it. I think he might have clipped him a little bit, but it could have been a lot worse. So Crazy Moving doing a pretty good job. I think he's finally got this base pretty much up and running. One little stalker trying to do some harassment, but that's not going to help too much. Here come the mutas once again. But again, that's a big Blink Stalker force that's going to be able to do a lot of damage to it. Unfortunately, he can lure him out of position, and he tends to do that a lot. He tries to lure Hero's army out of position and then swing around wildly, which is going to make it really hard for... Oh, those... those uh, the Templar... Oh, he could have... He's trying to get into position to drop down a storm, but... Oh, he's going to lose both of those Templar because he's too far out of position. That's not what he wanted at all. But he does lose a bit of Lings... Or a bit of mutas, gosh. Another blink under those mutas. He's going to try to take out some more. This upper base has been taken out. This is a, this is a hard game to call. I guess it really depends on who's going to win the roll of the dice at this point. I mean, the military forces are still pretty even on both players. This lower base, though, is really well defended, so it's going to be hard to, to pierce that. This base, just freshly set up, is uh, going to get stocked up now. More lings, more mutas on the way. Cybernetics core being rebuilt, plus three armor on the way. Here come the mutas once again, taking out the cannons. Oh, and the mothership! The mothership comes in, and the archons are there. Oh, is he going to try and throw them into the toilet? I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to get a chance to. The mutas are swinging around wildly once again. Hiding up at the top. He knows what to expect now. I think he's got a feeling. That is a lot of, of probes on that base. Storm goes down. Another warp in. But he's, he's doing a good job of taking out a lot of probes. Unfortunately, he's got just so many probes at that base, it almost doesn't matter too much. One little lonely Muta, just hanging out. So it cleans up the hold on that Zelnaga Tower. Moving it again, but the, the other ship is there. There goes the Vortex. Oh, and the mother ship does go down, but will it do enough damage? I know he sucked in a lot of units into that Vortex. And, oh no, and there they go. GG, crazy moving, calls GG, and Hero wins the game. That was an interesting little battle right there. Let me tell ya. Oh, lot to clean up there. Alright. Cool. So, hey guys. How's it going? Joker, Buddha. Thanks for dropping by. I saw that Viper had to leave. Sorry you had to go, buddy. Thanks for watching. Oh, we got a few more to go. It's now 7.30. I think I got a few more games we can throw in here. I know I got another game from Flash versus uh, Liquid Hey Pro. So that might be fun to watch. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, you, I'm sorry you two missed it. Like, I cast that incredible game of yours, Joker. <laughs> Did that just a few moments ago. I'm sure it'll be saved to the VOD, so if you want to catch it, I'll, I'll have to try and uh, deliver it once again. 
because that's, uh, that's some, fanta some fantastic stuff right there, let me tell you. Um, Alright. Well, I think let's roll into the next game. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? So we just did Liquid Hero and uh, Crazy Moving. We did Liquid Hero versus Marine King to start the show off. Uh, we did Flash versus Kawaii Rice earlier. I think I'll do one of Viper's games. One of my buddy Viper. So this is a practice game that Viper played. Now basically, like I mentioned earlier in the show, if you, any of you happen to be here, and I don't think you did, or if any of you happen to watch the VOD, um, Viper is working on a on Demaga's Bane Rain build, which is basically researching Overlord drop, Banelings, and then floating your Overlords over and dropping your Banelings onto their army. It's a pretty effective move, and it works really well if you can deliver it right and you get your timings right. So, this is what Viper is up to right now. He's going to be practicing this build and putting it into effect and seeing how well he can do. So, let's get with the introduction, shall we? We are here on Ohana and starting in the lower right. It is none other than Viper. Yeah. Get that dramatic GSL zoom. I didn't do I didn't do the zoom zoom pivot, but at least did the zoom. So take what you can get. <laughs> and his opponent starting in the upper left hand corner as the blue Protoss. It is little boots. So again, like I said, this is a practice game. Don't expect a whole lot of a lot. Don't expect any kind of hugely dramatic, dynamic play out of this. It's basically going to be Little Boots trying to provide adequate op uh, opposition for Viper while he tries to deliver this play and get his timings right. Um, basically, uh, if you go to his blog, Viper's blog, zergology.tumblr.com, you can see the build and how he explains it, and how he explained how he researched it, and how to perform it. Uh, but basically, that's how it starts. 14 pool going down. Um, not an expand yet. I know he's going to take the expand fairly soon. But we are waiting on that right now. Yeah, here it is. So there it is, 15 expand. It actually is getting blocked right now at <laughs> the, the probe. Is he going to deny it? Is he going to deny it with a pylon? Um, that happens, it, it just seems to happen more on the ladder than it really does in pro games. I guess it depends on the situation. Like, uh, when Demaga did this strategy versus, uh, Naniwa, uh, it was the same kind of thing, where the probe was at the natural, looking like it was going to block it, but he didn't drop a pylon to actually block it. He just hung out and stopped it. Uh, here we go, the Forge Fast Expand build. Nexus going down, there's your Forge, there's your Photon Cannon. And oh, that, that cannon, is it going to take out that overlord? I think that overlord speed might save it. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, three health. Three HP, and it escapes to regenerate. Well, look at that. <laughs> Prove me wrong, why don't you? Well, anyway. So there was a pylon dropped. It did get the probe get scared away. It's cleaned up now. But he's actually going to take his expansion over here. For now. But then I think he's also going to take it here as well. So, that's fine. So right now, we are looking at some pretty basic opening stuff. Um, this was one thing that uh, Viper said when he was uh, when he was streaming last night, when he actually played these games and talked about the build, is that the beginning of the, the, beginning of the build is kind of slow. And it's kind of boring. It's typical. It, it's not abnormal stuff. So it, it's not really easy to detect this build right off the bat. Uh, but in any event... We got Little Boots here going with a double gas play. No gas on his expansion quite yet. But he's getting ready to drop that cybernetic score. There it is. And there's your wall. So that's going to probably have a little bit of gap here where he can stick his zealot. So that's pretty good. Zealot coming out. Already trained on the spot that it needs to be in. So good stuff. So the Zelnaga Tower firmly in control of Viper. Viper is very good at holding down the Zelnaga. He's really good at getting map control, and you're going to see that um, in one of his other games. I don't know if I'll cast that today. I might save it for the next game, the next time I cast, so that there's a little bit of gap between <laughs> uh, Viper's practice games. But, in any event, 
Yeah, here we go. Cybernetics Core Warp Gate on the way, being Chrono Boosted out. This is pretty typical play out of Little Boots, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. Zerg player already on three bases. Transferring the drones. We are waiting to get into the exciting stuff, the really action-packed stuff. And I am so bad at remembering to put this stuff up on the overlay so people can see what's going on. I'm, I'm horrible at this. <laughs> But in any event, so there's your link speed just started on the way, gas being thrown down. That's some interesting stuff about this build as well. Um, this particular build, even though it's going to be heavy with banelings, uh, the gas doesn't come till much later. He throws down one gas to get his link speed, and he keeps um, farming off of it so that he can be prepared for the banelings. But he's not going to take a second gas until much later, which he just did only a few moments ago. So now he's ready to make the transition to Banelink. So it doesn't have a Banelink tower up yet. That'll be coming at some point. I mean, we're only about seven minutes into this game. So he is a little bit behind on his timings versus how Damaga would do it. But, you know, come on. I mean, it's Damaga. He's been probably been practicing this build a billion times a day forever. It's a big difference. It's fine. Um, in any event. So Viper getting some good coverage here on the map. Really good map visibility at this point. Like here, I'm going to show you. Let's just switch to just Viper's view. Look at this map visibility. I mean, he's got all these overlords in great position. He's got control of the Zelnaga Tower down there. He's got really good position all over the map to view everything. He's very good at that. Okay. That's one of the things that I think I, he's really good at, is keeping visibility up. So, plus one armor, plus one, care, uh, plus one attack is on the way. With the double Evo Chamber build, that is part of this build, the double Evo Chamber. There is your Baneling Nest coming in about the eight and a half minute mark. Layer Tech is on the way as well. So, it's going to be happening soon. Get ready for it. Get ready for the Overlord upgrades to start coming out. That's going to be a blast. More Lings on the way. 28 Lings are on their way right now. Oh, the fun is going to happen soon, guys very soon. There's the macro hatch, again, part of this build. There comes the lings. A couple of spine crawlers going up. Layer tech about to finish. Another hatchery. Oh, the macro hatch, which I just pointed out, duh. <laughs> so that's done. Or on the way. Um, now another part of this build is getting ready for a transition into late game. Because the, the Bane Rain build is really good um, for a mid game kind of attack, um, but it doesn't transition well. So you need to prepare for that either into a, a Mutalist play or Infester play, something like that, and that's part of this build as you prepare for that. Uh, so Banelink Speed is on the way before any Banelinks. That's okay. Ventral Sax is also on the way, so the drop design <laughs> for these bad boys is on the way. It's going to be good stuff. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be fun to watch. So Overlord drop is about halfway done. Oh boy, more Lings on the way to get ready for this big old drop. He's going to gather up right at this point here. And he's going to hold that other Zelnaga Tower, just increasing his map visibility. Oh, and here's that speedy little observer to get a full scout on what Little Boots is up to. Little Boots trying to take his third base right now. So, like I mentioned in, in one of the earlier games, letting a Protoss player go up to three bases can be kind of dangerous, especially if you're Zerg. Um, especially if they are able to do it this early. But, that is to say that, you know, this is end of the game. Because there's a big surprise coming his way once everything gets transitioned. But here comes Little Boots' small force. He's actually going to hold up here. Uh, he probably will try to scout out this position here, see if there's any base, and maybe transition and move into the third. But at that point, I don't know, or, is he, or maybe he's just going to go straight down to the third. Oh, and the Banelings are getting loaded up into the Overlords. Here comes Little Boots. He's moving in to try and take that third base. Viper will spot it. He's going to reverse course with these Overlords and these Lings. Let's see what we get. These are Blink Stalkers, so they are going to be able to... Well, maybe they're not Blink Stalkers. I thought they were. My mistake. <laughs> so he does not get Blink done, but he does get some good shields done. 
He's gonna move those units really well. Oh, but here comes the Bane Rain! Oh, no! Good night. And that is why it's an effective move. <laughs> that is why it's so effective. Plus two armor, plus two attack being researched. Now, still a whole, ba uh, still a whole overlord full of things, full of Bane things. Um, but that proxy pylon still hanging out there. I don't know if Viper knows it's there. He doesn't know it's there, but he just doesn't care. So now he's moving in on that third base. He's going to deny the third base from pro making progress. Both of those gateways drop without being canceled. That is too bad. And that is a third base denied successfully, I might add. Third base successfully denied. Very nicely done. So now, huge supply advantage for Viper. As he's going to try and probably regather a lot more of those banelings. I'm sure he's going to need to make a few more. Just a few more. Should do it. But here you go, Invest infestation pit is down, spire is down, I, I said a few more, not 53 more. Viper, come on. You're making me look bad. Roach Warren about to finish. So he's ready for the late game with the spire and the infestation pit, but I don't think he's going to need it at all. Not even a little bit. I mean, this is going to be really ugly really quick here. There's just nothing to stop this from utterly destroying everything that Little Boots has. I mean, if we take a look at the army count right now, Look at, the, look at the army count. Oh my god. Army supply difference is massive. Ooh, oh, what's he doing? Oh, no, no, oh. Oh, that's a waste of a band lane. I mean, at least he's got 52 more. Anyway, here he comes. Bane rain time. Oh, but the force is going to actually sneak down here. Oh, no. He's going to try and lure him up. He's going to shield off the ramp, but the shield isn't going to stop this. No, it's not Bane Rain! Good night, sweet prince. And the Banelings and the Zerglings clean everything up. G. G. That's it. That's it. So there you go. That is Bane Rain. <laughs> and that is a fine example of how you completely and utterly destroy your opponent. In pretty convincing fashion, I might add. So, I will cast his other game that I have here. Uh, his other... I think it's the same opponent, but it's, a, it's the same type of game where he's practicing that build. He does it a little bit differently, and he attacks in a little bit different way, so it's really cool to watch. But I will, pr I will show that probably next time I stream. As for when that will be, I don't know. I might, I might save it for next week. I might just keep practicing once a week, but we'll see. Alright, it is 7.40. I think I'm going to do one more game here, and then maybe call it for now, because my throat's getting a little bit sore. I forgot to get any water, but that's okay. I'm doing fine. I'm hanging in there. I'm, I'm, going, so I'm going tough. So let's see. One more game. We need a good one. We need one more good game. How about Liquid Hay Pro versus Flash? How's that sound? Want to see some Flash? Some more Flash in action? The Brood War 2 superhero? As he goes up against Liquid Hay Pro? I think, I think that might be good. I think we're going to do that. Well, let's do this. TVZ action. Hay Pro, Flash, for real, right now. Here we go. So starting here on Cloud Kingdom yet again. Gosh, I love this map, man. Used all the time. All right. Well, starting in the upper right-hand corner, as our red Zerg player, it is none other than Liquid Hay Pro. Mm -hmm. There he is, and his opponent, as the Blue Terran. Oh, you, you! If you don't know this man's name, you will very soon. I guarantee you. If you're a fan of StarCraft, you'll know these guys, this guy, very well, very soon. It is none other than Flash. So here we go. If you remember when what when we played the last game of uh, Kawhi Rice versus Flash, Kawhi was a little bit suspicious right off the bat. Hey, are you Flash? He asked some Flash. No response. But we'll see. So far, no chitter chatter here. Then again, these replays might not have any of the text in them, but heroes did. So I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Hey, Pro and Flash happening right now. So, like I said, from Flash. He tends to favor the 
14 expand build. He did in Brood War, he does here. Um, and this is another example of Terran with a, a wholly different placement for your initial supply depot. And because this is against Zerg, this is exactly what you want to do. You want to wall this ramp off, keep yourself protected in your main, and just play safe. Now Hey Pro preparing to drop his hatchery. Bam! 14 hatch, 15 hatch actually. Either way. Whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> Drops the early hatch before the, sp the spawning pool, so playing economically. And there it is. Command center. He's not dropping it down at the actual expansion yet, but he is building it. He's building it in a forward visible position, which is still pretty good because he can get good vision down the ramp here and everything like that, so it's good times. Hapro sending that overlord out to do a bit of scouting, trying to locate... Uh, I'm not actually sure what he's trying to do here. I, I mean, maybe he's just trying to get an idea of the if there's any kind of cheese play coming, which is a smart move. Uh, Korean servers, some of the players on the ladder especially, are kind of known for being cheesy. He might not have known this was Flash. I mean, honestly, there are so many players on this server that play as barcode players that <laughs> it's no big surprise. Uh, but anyway, spawning pool goes down. Let's check back in on Flash, who's going to complete his wall off here. So if any kind of aggression was coming from Hey Pro, which it's actually not, but if it were, then this is great timing to have that wall complete and ready to go. So there goes the scout for Flash to get an idea of what his Zerg opponent is up to. Unfortunately, it will arrive just after four Zerglings are spawned and ready to eat SCVs. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so that expansion is complete. He's going to make the transition into the or Orbital Command and then move it down. Um, some players, they may do it one way or the other. It really doesn't matter too, too much. Um, usually the player will build their Orbital first, then make the move so that it can gather up energy as it's moving. Um, which is good. It's a good way to not waste any time, basically, since it's going to take the same amount of time to transform it, whether it's in the air or already in position, so... And he's actually just going to leave it up here at the moment and produce SCVs out of it. Okay, so he's not going to move it quite yet. Oh, there it goes. Or nope, that's something else. Oh, I see. Trans he's moving his barracks, trying to drop down that reactor. So the first thing's going to pop up, but there is a marine there to kind of hold the fort. He does not know that the expansion's there, however, because he doesn't have that high ground visibility yet. So, pretty good play here. Factory gets completed. So that is done, as far as the Zerg player goes. Still just basic defensive play. He doesn't have a ton of stuff going down. He has no other tech going down. Uh, I'm not sure what Haypro's plan is here quite yet. Um, he's going double gas up at his main. So we got that going down. Uh, sorry, triple gas. He's taking one at his natural as well. Um, so this could be interesting. Uh, there goes the Roach Warren. Good scan right on top of that main that natural base. He's going to see the gas, so he's going to get an idea of that. He's probably going to suspect, if he sees one gas down at the natural, that he's probably also taking gas at the main. Um, that's a decent suspicion. Oh, here come the Hellions! Roasted Ling! Tasty! Well, at least he's going to know that this expansion's here now. As it soars overhead his Lings. <laughs> uh, hey Pro with some excellent creep spread so far. About seven minutes into this game, everything's growing up pretty well, but those Hellions, here they come. Oh, it's only got a couple of them. You might still be able to do some damage here, because there's... I mean, the Queens could do a good job of stopping it, but other than that, there's really not much in the way of defense at the moment. Uh, he does have some Roaches on the way. Uh, Banshees and Cloak being researched right now, so... Looks like they're going to get some of that Cloak Banshee harass. Another scan goes down, he's going to see all those Roaches there. Maybe he'll change his mind on moving in with those... And he will. Yeah, he's going to actually pull back. He's going to realize, yeah, you know, I don't really can't really do a whole lot with these guys now, so I'm just going to hold on, move back, and wait. Hey, Pro has this guy in position. He's going to see the bunker, but that's about it. And there is the Banshee. We are waiting now on the Cloak to finish, which is just over halfway done. Once that finishes, more Banshees. We're probably going to have two or three Banshees ready to go by the time that Cloak finishes. Or probably just two. Two Banshees with Cloak and absolutely nothing back here to protect against it is going to do some pretty serious damage. That is for sure. 
Creep spread looking awesome. So far has not been controlled by, by uh, Flash. He should be sending those guys out there. He's got all of these Hellions. He should be shooting them out there to try and control some of this creep spread. Uh, but I guess he's investing a lot into this Cloaked Hellion play. Or Cloaked Banshee play, excuse me. Now the Starport. Where is he going with that Starport? Okay. Oh, I guess he changed his mind. He wants to go with the reactor play now. No more tech lab. He's got enough in the way of Banshees. And here... Here comes one of them. Oh, don't lose it before you can cloak it. There goes the cloak. And they are both cloaked and doing some damage. Great job of, of not wasting the cloak too early. Oh, but the spore crawler finishes, so... So much for that. He might pick off... Oh, he might pick off some more of these workers, though. Yeah, he's gonna get another one. But there is a spore crawler there, so... Oh, and the Banshee is probably gonna die. No. Oh. So Haypro is in a pretty good position right now because he held that off with good timing on his spore crawlers. Now we've got the Hellions rolling out, hopefully to try and contain this creep, which is getting really invasive. <laughs> He's finally starting to clean it up. There's a lot of tumors to work on, though. And he's making him burn through a lot of these scans as well, but here come the roaches to help stop this. He's going to take down a few. Uh, or at least one. Oh, will he get two of them? No, he won't. But the creep still grows. He did a pretty good job of taking out some of it, but I don't know if he got enough. I think K-Pro's in a really good position here versus Flash. All right, another pinch of army about to move out. Plus two attack, plus two armor for ground units. Pathogen glands on the way. Roach speed is on the way. Plus one attack only just started for Flash. I think that's one thing, and th this replay might be a little old, but I think that's one thing that Flash really needs to work on is, is his upgrade timing. He seems to fall really behind his opponents in terms of upgrade timing. Oh, and look at that. The whole thing gets cleaned up fully and completely and handily. So now the Zerg force is going to move in. This is going to be this might be pretty big, pretty bad news for uh for Flash here. He does have those tanks in the back. He's got the bunkers in the front. Those are going to help out a lot, but the roaches are pretty strong. Fortunately, he does clean up all of those lings. So gosh, that creep spread, man. <laughs> That is a work of art right there. You can see the form of the map on that creep spread. It's pretty interesting. So we are now looking at another hatchery that has gone down. More creep rings being spread very well, as a matter of fact. Let's check back in on Flash's bases here. Supply depots at the front. Double reactor on his barracks. Start to churn out some more marines. Another bit of scan, another bit of cleanup. Oh, but the army, no. I don't know what he's going for here. This is not getting <laughs> sieged up on those tanks. He's going to be able to do some good damage from afar here. April's got to watch himself. Does have a siege tank loaded up in that medevac. He's going to siege it up a little bit closer. Those infestors are in there. Oh, no, I don't think this is going to be good. Oh, good fungal there. Siege tanks getting cleaned up. Here come Lings from the back. He's going to swing down. He's going to clean up all these units. Looks like another big fungal. Another fungal goes down. This is not pretty for Flash whatsoever right now, folks. Tank goes down. Haypro doing a fantastic job of keeping Flash on the run. A lot of medevacs, though, definitely makes this army last a lot longer than it probably, under normal circumstances, would. Adrenal glands on the way, more infestors coming out, a greater spire on the way out, so if this game keeps going, 
Uh, we're probably going to see some Broodlord play coming out soon. See? You can see it right there. If you were really watching those Marines, the, the amount of medevacs really helps keep these Marines alive for a lot longer than they probably should be. Um, I, seen fla I saw Flash do that a lot in his game against Kawhi Wright. It's just the sheer of, uh, amount of medevacs really helped his army survive. And he could stim a lot more often, and he, you know, it was, it was a really good strategy. Up big spread here, he's going to stim up, and here... Oh, no. Waiting for that tank reinforcement to come in, it looks like. Yep, here we go. Alright, the attack's underway. Big fungal's going down. Oh, he's going to lose one of those infestors. Oh, and one of them goes down. Two of them go down. Infested Terran quickly drop. Flash, man. I thought he might have been done for, but this this might be his turning point. He might have actually come out of this on top. So now Flash working over that fourth base. He's going to take that out. Another big group of fungals goes down right on top of the medevacs as well. That's very important. Could Haypro pull back from this? He's got a lot of units streaming in. He does manage to take out that tank, but another tank coming in from the back to reinforce this. This is, a, this is a tough one. This is a really, really balanced game right now. I'm just not sure what's going to happen. He is going to take that base out. Yeah, now. Down it goes. Now he's going to pull back. Flash is going to regroup a bit. A few lings in Flash's base here. Just that creep spread is just amazing. <laughs> it really is. I, I know I keep talking about it, but it's just so impressive. Uh, Alright, Flash rolling in with his forces from the back here. The scan goes down. Here comes the army. A big one. It's fight time. I hope you're ready for this. Big fungals go down. Oh, I think... I think Hapro may have pulled this off. That is a GG from Flash. And indeed, Liquid Hapro takes the win. So that was interesting. And there you go. So Liquid Hapro taking the win over Flash in that match. Oh, and I think that that is probably going to do it. I'm feeling a bit worn out. <laughs> See, I don't have a lot of practice at this yet, so i got to try and get back in my rhythm. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope I did an okay job. Uh, I am working on getting better and... and, and being a little bit more engaging of a caster. I hope I did an okay job tonight. Uh, if you have a game that you have played, or any games, have replays that you just want to shoot me over, uh, send them to me at pr at gkick.net. I'll even leave it up in the chat so you can see. But once again, that is pr at gkick.net. Um, send me your replays. Whatever you got. You know, Email them to me. I'll check them out. I mean, I need to improve my own ability as a caster, so the more games I have to cast, the better. But that is going to do it. So if you watch this live, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate the support. If you are watching the VOD of this, thanks that you actually cared to come by and check everything out um, after the fact. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to try and actually get this clip onto YouTube. That'd be kind of nice to be able to just dump it all right on our YouTube channel. And that YouTube channel is youtube.com slash gkicknetwork. So all of our videos will be on there from now on. This is the new streaming channel for gkick, gkick TV. So um, later tonight, uh, in about an hour or so, I believe we're also going to get some streaming World of Warcraft raids. So if you're into Warcraft, you're going to get that. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I am Shalthus, and I will see you all next time.